Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform our viewers about technology and technology-related topics around the world of virtualization. Today's video has been one I haven't done in a very long time. It's going to be a Raspberry Pi video. Yeah, I don't traditionally do these because viewership on videos about Raspberry Pis seem not to be my channel's thing, and we don't get great view counts. But today, I think I have one that you're really going to like. We're going to be installing Proxmox 7 on a Raspberry Pi. There is now a build on GitHub where you can do just that. Run Proxmox 7 on your Raspberry Pi. So here you can see the actual GitHub repository that we'll be using with the directions that I'm going to be using to install Proxmox 7 on our Raspberry Pi. Now, there are a few things that are vague in the notes here and I think will really help us as we make videos. The first thing we want to do is note that this is for a 64-bit OS, not 32. Now, right now, the present release of Raspberry, if we were to go to the Raspberry Pi website and try to download it, so if we were to jump over here to download the operating system, we will see that the present releases, if I was to download this file, which I can start here, are only 32-bit. They're not the 64-bit file. So right now, the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS seems to be in beta, and it's relatively difficult to find. Now, I'm not going to take you through the steps of actually installing that, as I seem not to have an SD card reader that will plug into my computer that I use for filming. But what I am going to do is show you a little bit about how to actually get there. So you can figure it out and get there on your own. So what I ended up doing was finding a link after searching for the 64-bit OS here at raspberrytips.com. Now, if I scroll down here and look through most of this, we can find there's a direct link right here to the 64-bit version. Now, I downloaded the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS that was released on 11.8. And then, after taking that, I used this program called Etcher to flash it onto my SD card. I placed the zip file that I downloaded right here, selected my SD card, and then clicked flash. Then I inserted my SD card into my Raspberry Pi and booted it up. Because I was doing this headless, which I would highly suggest you don't do, as we're actually going to take our internet connection or our ethernet connection down as a drawback to running this script as we install it. So I don't suggest you do this headless. But because I am doing this headless today to demonstrate the large majority of this process for you with screen recording, I also inserted a file with no extension, so no dot anything, called SSH that allows me to SSH into this server by default or this Raspberry Pi. So I know my IP address is going to be this 1010.265. You should view your router to determine what your IP address is going to be. Then you can use PuTTY to SSH into your Raspberry Pi. So now I can enter the default username of Pi and the default password of Raspberry. Now this has all been a very straightforward setup of Raspberry Pi OS. The first thing, like always, like every update we're going to do, is we're going to run a sudo pass wd pi command to enter the new password. This will create a new password for the Raspberry Pi. 
You want to do that first because Raspberry Pis are very well known at this point, and any Pi on the internet is liable to get attacked quite quickly if using the default password. Now we want to run raspi slash c-o-n-g f-i and we need to run that as sudo. So we're going to run sudo raspi dash config and now we want to enlarge the filing system to our full SD card. It's going to ask us to reboot and we can. It's going to kick us out of our putty session. So we're going to have to relaunch that in a minute here. Now we can log in. Now the first thing we need to do is run sudo apt update and and sudo apt grade dash y to update our repositories and update our Raspberry Pi. All right, now that we have the Raspberry Pi OS up to date, and all Raspberry Pi repositories updated, we can begin following the directions here. So the first thing we need to do is run sudo s. This is going to put us in root user mode. Then we can run this command, which is actually going to download the repository and the script that we're going to use to set up Proxmox 7 to our Raspberry Pi. Now we're going to use the nano command to display and edit this file here. So some of the things that we want to change is most likely the host name, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, the default gateway. Now, the values that I enter here are most likely not going to be the values that you're going to enter. So please enter the values that you need for your network. So once we have configured these three things, the host name, the IP address that we want to assign to the Raspberry Pi, and the gateway address, as well as the subnet mask if required. If you don't know that it's required, it most likely is slash 24. We can go ahead and save this file. Press control X, Y for yes, and enter. Now that we have made the modifications to the Raspberry Pi configuration file or script, it's going to be time to make this script runnable on this system. Then we can run the script by putting a dot slash in front of the script name. This will begin executing the sh script on this system. We're going to be asked to enter the password that we're going to want to use when logging into Proxmox. All this begins running, which is going to take considerable time. I would also like to mention, you definitely want to assign a static IP address to your Proxmox server for communicating with it later. The script makes that fairly easy to do, but make sure you do so. Now we're going to let this process run until it reboots. Okay, so our script is run and we're now at the reboot phase. We can try to reestablish our putty connection. So what I had to do on the console 
was I actually had to follow the configuration steps for the Proxmox configuration of a bridge, but I had to do them manually. For some reason, when running this script, although we enter the default static IP address for our Proxmox install, the bridge does not get automatically created during the installation process. So, from the console, we have to go back in and create the bridge. Now, I'm going to show you the steps that I used for doing just this, but I have to do it off screen, unfortunately, because I do not possess the right tools for demoing directly from the Raspberry Pi 4's HDMI interface. So to create the bridge, the first step I did was to enter sudo nano etc network interfaces. And now at this screen, you'll see a bunch of different information. Everything that I'm highlighting here will not be in the file as default. You're going to need to add it. Now if we go over to the Proxmox wiki, we can see these exact steps here for creating a bridge. Now if you notice, I've substituted there IP address and gateway for mine, as well as their bridge port for the bridge port that my device is using. So my device is using ETH0 as found here. So I've just filled out the bridge port as that. Everything else is directly from the Proxmox wiki. Now I just save, exit, and do a reboot to bring up the interface. Because when doing this, you will have no internet connection, as your system has no established IP address. So you cannot install something like IF up down to activate this port without doing the reboot. When you do the reboot, your system will come up and you will have an IP address and your connection to your network will be reestablished. If I run the IP address command here, you will see that we now have a bridge. If you had done this prior, you would have no bridge. Okay, so now that I've rebooted and I've shown you how I can do this, let's go ahead and log into our Proxmox web interface for the first time from this Raspberry Pi. To do that, we're gonna type HTTPS colon slash slash and the configured IP address for our Proxmox web interface. Then we're going to add a colon and we're going to enter port 8006. We get prompted with this security risk because we have self-signed certificates for SSL on our server. We can click advanced and accept the risk. Here you go. There's your Proxmox web interface running from your Raspberry Pi. We use root and the password we configured for the Proxmox during the installation process. There you have it. We now have a full installation of Proxmox running on a Raspberry Pi. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this gives you the opportunity to experience and learn more about home lab setups. I look forward to multiple different projects with this installation, from iSCSI to NTFS and other different network configurations that I can play around with easily and simply and also cheaply using the Raspberry Pi 4 versus having to buy thousands of dollars in hardware. If you enjoyed tonight's video, found it educational, informational, like just generally wanting to support Virtualize Everything in their endeavor to bring content about virtualization and home lab setups, please consider like, sharing, subscribing, and checking out our merch store at store.virtualizeeverything.com. Also, there will be a full write-up on the steps that were performed tonight 
for setting up a Raspberry Pi 4 as a Proxmox 7 server at virtualizeeverything.com. There will also be a direct link provided in the comment section of this video for you to view that exact tutorial. As always, have a good night.